Okay, so welcome everybody. This is Brett Fogel here with Moonstream and Crypto, and uh, this is our weekly crypto mastery class. Um, by the way, we will we'll be going over the crypto trader success checklist here today. So uh, as part of our weekly routine, we're going to unpack some news, look at some charts. If you'd like to get a free copy of the trader success checklist, you can do that right over at moonstream.io. And down at the bottom, you can uh, sign up for these weekly classes here and also the Trader Success Checklist, as well as our weekly newsletter over on the left-hand side. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, we upload this class to YouTube. You can also find that at moonstream.io and uh, some other things, some other free stuff down here at the bottom, uh, as well as some other things that we do over here. But uh, I want to really dive into the uh, news here and uh, unpack this a bit. So hopefully you guys can see me have a little bit of a new format here. Hopefully uh, everything looks good. And let's see what's happening in uh, the world of crypto. And then again, we're going to go over some different uh, charts and things like that. So see some alerts fired overnight. Coinbase looking like possible breakout uh, MDT crossing up. So uh, yeah, we'll unpack all that in a minute. But uh, first the news. And uh, by the way, let me open up the chat. Some of you are here uh, live. We open it up to our, our whole list here so that so we have kind of some new faces in here and wanted to give you guys a sample of these free classes that we do Tuesdays and also I'll tell you about a class we do on Wednesdays as well we also do a class on Thursdays some of you are in for our retire rich group but this class is mostly for the news and some indicators look at the markets and seeing what's happening there all right so if you do have questions feel free to drop in the chat I'll check that periodically so uh, anyway let's dive in uh, Bitcoin slips back from 18 month high, you know, that 38K levels kind of giving us some trouble. I've been saying for weeks, I think we have a pullback, which would be good, likely to around 32K, even 30K would be a nice little bounce point. And um, so some of this news will skim because it's not really that newsworthy. A lot of these uh, are designed to get clicks and uh, sell advertising. But uh, yeah, 40,000 is in sight. So I think if we can break above 38K, then it's a pretty quick move up to 48K, 50K. And I'll show you why in today's class. But um, we have to realize things go up and down. The cycles are important and nothing goes straight up. So buying the dip has uh, been a good strategy as long as we're in a bull run. Not so much when we're in a bear market uh, and buying lower and lower, chasing the, the bottom, trying to catch a falling knife. Don't want to do that. So fortunately, we've turned and uh, we put a bottom in around 16.5, which we've been watching for a better part of a year. And I'm glad to see that that held. So not a whole lot here. Let's jump ahead. Some of the more newsworthy uh, news is uh, the Binance news. So let's just kind of see where that uh, lands. Well, I tell you what, we'll go left to right here. I've got, uh, this says Bitcoin metric. This is Cointelegraph, pretty good uh, news. And um, and the futurized 48K that we talked about around the ETF, you know, the ETF, is the sort of big catalyst we're waiting for. I have um, nine different small catalysts that any one of which could ignite the other eight and really create a blaze and send us much higher faster. Those of you who are in our M3 active trader class uh, have seen that chart. Uh, maybe we'll glance at it a bit today. Bitcoin ETF approvals may have kept timing as the Ichimoku cloud. Okay, we haven't looked at the Ichimoku in a while. We can certainly do that. And um, let's see, analysts, all these... Uh, uh, analysts here that I've never heard of. So, um, you know, we'll make our own decisions and TA, but I like to kind of see what's in the news. So he says, this person says 43K Bitcoin, most conservative level. I don't know what this this means. Um, so, all right, weekly Ichimoku, we will look at that and see what's going on there. But uh, I imagine it's coming up either right into the cloud or breaking out of the cloud. And that's uh, a good sign. Well, let's see, here's the chart, weekly Bitcoin. Yeah, so it broke out above the cloud here a couple of weeks ago, and that's usually a good sign. And pushing up to this level, which the Chimoku is not really going to tell us a lot. I think we're due for a pullback on that anyway. So let's see. Uh, let's see. 48K now reasonable Bitcoin target. I'll show you why I've been saying that for months. And if we have 48K, I think we could hit 50K. That's that golden pocket on the Fibonacci retracement. So let's move along here. <clears throat> and... All right, this person says, let's see, allow, okay. Daily HODL, good source of news, bullish can, channel, uh, bullish, <laughs> one of the most bullish charts I've seen, ex Goldman Sachs executive. I wonder if that's Raul Powell. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, key indicators flashing bullish. Okay. So, you know, I think we are bullish. We're just in a pullback 
uh, area where we should pull back. I think we will. We could rock it higher. If we break 48K then on, uh, or 38K rather, then I think we push higher quicker. Whales start shifting Dex token ahead of massive unlock. I'm not going to look at that. Let's see. Tether whales add a bunch of tether in six months. So it might be worth looking at that and just kind of see. We're trying to form an overall market opinion before we dive into the charts. But if you're new here, I have always said, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Or sorry, I did it backwards. Show, tell me, show me the, uh, tell me the, yeah, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Exactly. Right. So that's uh, my, um, you know, the charts really are a psychology study and um, there are always more active, I won't say smarter traders out there, but uh, companies and institutions that have tons of analysts out there analyzing all this news and they're voting with their wallets. So we'll see what moves the markets and what doesn't, but the the charts usually tell us those inflection points, just waiting for a catalyst, which they use the, the news to drive. So keeping that in mind, some of this we'll dive into a little deeper. Some of it will gloss over, usually spend about 20 minutes on the news and then do dive into the charts. All right. Bitcoin farmers, uh, bullish picture gears up to leave 15 month accumulation phase. We can look at that and let's jump that in there. Let me move that back to the main screen here. Okay. And um, <clears throat> pardon me. So. Let's see. Analyst predicts upward squeeze for Cosmos uh, altcoin. Cosmos is a good look at. We'll look at Adam. All right. Institution expecting ETF Spark, largest capital inflows to crypto since late 2021. You know, this is uh, not new news, but it is, you know, it does make sense. The Some people say the Bitcoin ETFs are priced in. I don't think so. I think they're partially priced in. And when we get the approval, we'll see a big green candle and may see 5 or 10K Bitcoin uh, price increase very quickly. So it's a good time to be getting into the game and waiting for pullbacks. That's the TLDR on that. That's what we're doing and advising our clients to do as well. Let's see. Crypto assets massively outperform tech as key catalyst to kick in. That's a mouthful. And again, uh, Raul Paul chiming in on that. So we'll look at this. He's a pretty sharp guy. All right, we're getting down a little bit lower. Let's see, chatbot, uh, don't need to look at that, although I'm familiar with Gorillo. Gorillamo. I was playing around with it last night. Gorillamo is built on, kind of tough to say, Gorillamo is a built on the chat GPT format and it can take a sentence and turn it into code. Uh, here's why that's interesting. Many of you know that we've been looking to create a super indicator and combining some of our existing indicators and also... I'd love to program in to TradingView our rocket on the launchpad indicator. Well, I'll be playing around with that this week. Girolamo, you can type that in. I just tested. it. Let me see if I have that pulled up just so you can see this to show you. I was looking at that last night. Yep, here it is. And I typed in here and I said, can you code in uh, uh, PineScript, which is the language for TradingView? So here was me last night. Can you code in PineScript? So basically, if you guys want to build your own indicators, you could go over here, get a ChatGPT account and Google Grimore. Maybe that's different. It's a little, sounds similar. Okay, Grimore, maybe that's different. But at any rate, uh, the good news is I'm going to be playing around with this and I would love to be able to, to report back here this month that we've created the rocket on the launch pad as an indicator scanner and even combining our ERI TSI. So that's kind of exciting. So uh, just getting into that and we'll uh, certainly let you guys know. That'd be fun. All right. <clears throat> Binance CEO details prediction. We're going to get into that. Robert F. Kennedy, Robert, sorry, Robert Kennedy Jr. issues CBDC warning. Um, you know, uh, he's a Bitcoin bull, crypto bull, but he's also a conspiracy theorist. And probably the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Uh, I think that um, we won't go down the rabbit hole with that just here yet. Let's see, about a million dollars. Let's see, that's, that's a billion dollars in Bitcoin yanked from exchanges two weeks in two weeks as whales accumulate ETH and XRP. Hmm. Uh, I'm curious about that. Let's take a look at this. And 524K Bitcoin price possible over the next four years, according to on-chain analyst Plan B. I thought I'd seen that. Yeah, that's worth looking at. He's got a very interesting chart out there. So uh, let's see. I think we'll do one more. Uh, Trader warns Chainlink at risk of correction updates outlook. Okay, we'll look at Chainlink anyway. So let's move on here. We've got, uh, let's see. This is that, uh, any, anytime you see ex-Goldman Sachs executive, that's Raoul Paul. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, he uh, is a pretty smart guy and has been in Bitcoin for a while. Let's just kind of unpack this a little bit. And I'll turn on my uh, the highlighter here. So we have Raul Pulse has the indicators of flashing bullets for the smart contract platform Ethereum. As the altcoin, altcoin remains above the 2000 level. Yeah, I want to see it above 2200 before I think it really breaks out. So we will look at uh, ETH as well with our indicators. And so, um, but yeah, ETH looking pretty bullish here. And, uh, you know, it had a couple fake outs along the way. I was about to sell half of my ETH, but decided, you know, that I think it's probably going to break out to the upside. So uh, I'm happy to say that uh, it did after that. So we'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, as Bitcoin runs higher and higher and we see profit taking in Bitcoin, we'll see some of that money flow over into ETH and some of the other layer ones so that uh, rather than go into cash and fiat, which is always what happens on these bull runs. Let's see uh, ETH. Let's see. Zoom out using weekly data. ETH already broken out from its near perfect wedge pattern. Right. So we had this wedge pattern forming. And I see a lot of these happening, by the way. That's why it's a very exciting time to be getting into crypto. These kind of wedge patterns breaking out of these downward trending trend lines. And typically what we want to see is this thing push up, break that trend wedge, and then come back and retest that. But we are seeing a lot of those and also breaking above their 21 and 50 week exponential moving averages, very bullish. Okay, so I think we've unpacked that pretty well. Let's see, you've got 100 biggest tether whales at 1.6 billion in USDT. That's tether in six months. And let's see, I haven't heard that. I don't know why that might be relevant other than if they're taking it out of crypto and uh, getting ready to weather the storm. However, we have to remember Cynthia Loomis, who is pro-Bitcoin, is trying to clean things up. She was voicing concerns with Binance and money laundering. And sure enough, the SEC came in. And uh, if you haven't heard, in case you've been hiding under a rock, the SEC has uh, sued Binance and uh, and uh, charged uh, CZ for anti breaking anti-money laundering rules, which he's pled guilty to. So that's that's a brewing storm that we need to make aware, make ourselves aware, because if that were to escalate, you know, that could certainly create not quite an FTX moment, but let's say we need a catalyst for a pullback here, which I submit to you, we do. And that would be good to shake out one last, uh, you know, round of retail. So institutions and BlackRock and the big buyers can come in and really get behind this rally. So we want to be looking for possible uh, curveballs and um, uh, reasons for, again, sh you know, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Uh, FTX, before FTX happened, the chart was telling me where we need to go down here. It was pushing up to the, I believe it was the 20-week moving average, simple moving average, and that was a bearish pattern. Sure enough, FTX came out, cratered that, came back. So just keep that in mind. And so... Uh, the reason I mentioned that is uh, Cynthia Loomis was also, uh, you know, targeting Tether a little bit. Now, there's been FUD around Tether for years, and it's never panned out, basically saying it's a Ponzi. They don't have enough crypto, but they have repeatedly said they do. So we have to see, uh, you know, kind of keep an eye on that story. Let's take a look. Leading crypto anal analytics firm Santimit it says that largest Tether whales, I'll just highlight this for us. I've got to turn this on on every page, apparently, have been uh, gobbling up the stable coin. I did notice that USDT dominance was clicking higher, but it really has been a sideways range. So like Bitcoin dominance, there's ETH dominance and then there's Tether dominance. So Bitcoin dominance has been going higher. I think it does continue higher. More money flows into Bitcoin. Tether has been in sort of a sideways pattern. So this news is not really moving the markets either way. But uh, it could indicate money coming out of the markets into stablecoin in case of a drop and another dip in Bitcoin and crypto. All right. So we have here a crypto market bullish divergence as stablecoin whales accumulate big during the August dip. Let's see. We'll pull this up here in a moment. I don't want to get too far in the weeds in this class. We do dive into this a little bit deeper in the crypto um, M3 Moonstream M3 crypto class tomorrow, where we dive into kind of more of the macro markets and individual coins. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, here a little later in the class. Uh, this is just a lot of uh, lines here is going to make our head hurt. Let's not worry about that. And, um, you know, don't see a whole lot here that's newsworthy. And so I I'm not going to 
What are they saying that the analytics firm says traders are starting to flash signs of fear? Now, on the fear and greed index, fear is good because it usually indicates another upswing, whereas if it's too slanted on the greed side, then things are usually overbought, need to pull back a bit. All right, so um, I think that's enough of this. I want to get through some more of this news and then into the charts for you guys. And uh, and I'll check the chat here in a minute just to see. Got lots of screens here, so I need to make sure that I have that up. And um, oops, don't want me to do that. Uh, don't want to close the room on you guys. Where's that chat window? It's uh, it's hidden somewhere. I'll come back to it. All right. Um, institutions expecting ETF spark largest capital inflows. So we've seen a lot of that happening over the last few weeks. Of course, price pushing up based on the rumor. We'll just call it a rumor for now that uh, BlackRock is about to get approved for their ETF. And um, uh, just a quick aside, by the way. Uh, just a little bit of paranoia has always served me well in business and in crypto. And I was uh, speculating back when Cointelegraph had falsely falsely announced that Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin BlackRock ETF had been approved and um, shot prices of Bitcoin way up. And then Kana came back down again right immediately when they found out it was not a confirmed news story. Now, that story was was broken by Cointelegraph. Well, immediately I thought, because I've been working with somebody inside Cointelegraph that uh, knew they were laying off all their U.S. staff and were having money issues. So wouldn't it make sense if you're the billionaire owner of Cointelegraph, bleeding revenue, and uh, offshore, outside of the or this wide-reaching arm of the SEC, so the owners at Cointelegraph are uh, Russian, so uh, wouldn't it be a great way to make some money to use your platform to leak to pre, uh, you know, leak information that was maybe not confirmed yet to spike the market and leverage long with options on the Bido and also leverage long in Bitcoin and uh, take a big cash uh, sweep off of the table there and then short it on the way down once the news broke. Well, uh, let's just say that that uh, is not outside the realm of probability. Okay, I don't want to, this is a public recording, but, um, uh, you know, this is crypto, folks. So anyway, um, but uh, Raul Paul came out and said, I think it was actually it was Mark Yusko said out, he said, you know, it wasn't a false story, it was just early. So I think there's some inside information that uh, we're not privy to, uh, but that uh, this will come. And um, I, I submit to you, we'll see that BlackRock ETF approved by January or in January. That's my my read on this. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. And uh, let's see. So here we say the uh, inflows in the crypto markets, as we sort of talked about, preempting that Bitcoin ETF, which is likely coming. And uh, BlackRock, incidentally, has also filed for an Ethereum ETF. So that's more reasons and rationale to be having a larger percentage of our holdings in Bitcoin and ETH for that stability and that price spike. Now, I think in terms of other appreciation percentages there are some other ones that we might want to have our eyes on and uh, we'll kind of touch on those in a bit all right so uh, let's see a uh, big yeah, this is sort of old news here as far as inflows again i'm trying to to gather an overall market uh, thesis on are we going higher or lower and if there's anything out in the news we need to be aware of and keep an eye on so this uh, story here crypto assets will massively outperform tech as key uh, catalyst starts to kick in you know they love these alliterations here like coca cola you know tech key catalysts you know just those roll off your tongue to catch people's attention uh it's easy to read harder to say sometimes and uh, here we go raul paul back uh, with another uh, quote so digital assets set to outrun tech stocks as an important catalyst i don't know about that um a lot of it is uh lockstep with one of my um, key factors for the markets exploding, which would be pulling back on interest rates and quantitative easing, which means dumping more money in the economy. You know, the U.S. economy is in trouble. We've got massive debt. The interest rates are high, which means our interest payments on our own debt is staggering. So we've got to get interest rates under control and we're going to have to print. We're going to have to quantitatively ease to start making those payments. There's no way really around that. I've heard China is already doing that. And um, it's only a matter of time. Well, what happened last time we started 
pumping money into the economy. Well, Bitcoin, crypto, and tech stocks all went up. So I wouldn't rule out tech stocks. Um, I would uh, I would encourage us to look at some stocks like Coinbase. Coinbase, uh, as my alert went off last night, it looks like it could be breaking out into a new bullish territory. So we'll look at that. That's a good way to hedge and have some exposure to regulated markets. I, I do think Coinbase likely will be a future Netflix and Apple market leader. And we can see that, we can surmise that based on the SEC's uh, actions and regulating through you know, enforcing through, uh, regulating through enforcement rather against Binance. And let's just say, I won't say they're enemies, but the handwriting's on the wall. BlackRock is, is silently pulling strings to ensure that Coinbase, which they are investing in, is the leading U.S. Uh, crypto uh, centralized exchange. Okay, now to avoid monopoly lawsuits, probably they'll leave Gemini alone, but they are going after Kraken and they're going after Binance and then F the FTX. I think in the end, FTX might come out as an inside job and they are taken down. And Sam was merely a pawn uh, and uh, sort of the... Um, Useful idiot, as they say. Uh, here's a guy that had all the money and power without any experience. And so uh, what a uh, an ideal pawn to take down and create an example for why we, we need regulated and audited markets. So again, put our tin hat on for a moment. I think that will come out. All right. So that, uh, let's see, Raul Paul says that a million followers on this on Twitter there that dollar liquidity is ultimately what drives risk assets like stocks and crypto. As I was saying that dollar liquidity, lots of dollars in the system. People go to risk on assets versus rising interest rates. People go out of risk on assets into more stable and conservative assets. So uh, Ian here says the chart showing the NASDAQ index has been moving near lockstep in liquidity for more than a decade. So, you know, um, after the 28 bear market, kicked off the largest and longest bull market in history. So, you know, um, and in a different chart that I don't have handy, that also shows that we should be in a bull market till 2030, a macro bull market. So maybe we'll get into that next week, but um, crypto is no different than the NASDAQ as it shows here. So, you know, it's had, a, you know, as good as a run, almost as good of a run as the tech stocks, but this sideways action here would tell us that maybe it's time all this high risk and uh, risk on asset liquidity moves on in, into Bitcoin and crypto. Certainly possible. And he says the super massive black hole. So I think that there's a lot of signs pointing toward uh, this uh, rapid rise in crypto. And I think it could happen sooner than people think. Let's see. Uh, Raul Paul also bullish on altcoins moving forward. Notes that picking and choosing smaller altcoin projects can be immensely difficult and risky. Well, I would disagree with that. And uh, we have a secret weapon, uh, which uh, we'll also be looking at our crypto mastery indicators that uh, give us a good idea of when things are going to move. So moving right along here, and uh, let's see if you guys do have anything you want me to look at. We'll get to the chat and uh, do that toward the end if you have any favorite coins. Daily Hoddle says about a million, sorry, billion in Bitcoin yanked from exchanges in two weeks. Uh, let's see, as whales accumulate ETH and XRP. Let's see, why might that be? Um, you know, there's a lot of the headlines are sort of clickbait. So I'm skimming this. Martinez goes on to note that crypto whales given more attention to Ethereum. Well, we'll see. We'll look at ETH dominance and see what uh, is happening there. And certainly I'll park that in the back of my brain to keep an eye on. 524,000 Bitcoin price reasonable over the next four years. Plan B has been pretty vocal lately. And let me see if I can pull up this graphic that I posted in our our M3 active trader the other day from plan B uh, from his Twitter here. Here it is. So let me move this over and make sure you guys can see that. So this was a uh, plan B on uh, Twitter the other day, pointing out that the 2012 having uh, the most Bitcoin was under $16. Can you imagine you guys? I actually bought my first Bitcoin at $20 back around 2013. And uh, from the founder of BitPay on the condition that I used it to buy drinks and appetizers for happy hour in a bar in Orlando, a restaurant bar that he had uh, one of the early uh, places that would accept Bitcoin. So that is now my $38,000 happy hour, you guys. 
hey, we all have our early Bitcoin story. 2016 halving, most Bitcoin was in the 256 to 1,024 range. 20, uh, 2020 halving, most Bitcoin was between 4 and 16K. So at the 2024 halving, he suggests that the most Bitcoin will be between 16K and 65K. Uh, and that would lead me to believe that the, the that being the bell curve, we could be trading higher by then. And I think that's possible up at new highs by the halving coming up in April 2024. And he says, I would not be surprised if the next four year cycle, most Bitcoin will transfer between 65K and 524K, you guys. We are still so early. All right. So uh, that's, I think, enough to unpack there. And um, yeah, it's good. Uh, I think we already covered that. So here, this is what he's saying. And I'd already posted that. Here's that same chart. I had already posted that in our uh, M3 Trader group yesterday. But here's, uh, you can find that online if you'd like to find that. Just uh, Google Plan B. You can find him on Twitter. And um, he's been pretty uh, present in predicting there's alliteration for you i'm pretty prescient and predicting future prices uh i'm stuck on peas here you guys uh for bitcoin in the future bitcoin forming a bullish uh sharp formation picture as bitcoin gears up to leave 15 month accumulation phase behind uh basically says we're breaking out of okay well here's that white cough accumulation pattern i've talked about this and a year ago when i released my blood in the streets report if you guys remember that was in December of 2022, saying it's time to buy. People thought I was crazy, but we were right. And then I'll show you also, then our early reversal indicator showed on the January timeframe that the bottom was in and we were buying. That was exactly the right time. So part of the reason I was suggesting that is this Wyckoff accumulation pattern. If you're not familiar with this, you should uh, go and Google it and this exact chart here, the white one I had in my report. Essentially, Wyckoff was a stock trader and analyst in the early 1900s, and he noticed that there were certain phases where there was uh, the bigger buyers were accumulating, and, uh, and that was the phase B, the accumulation phase, and then the distribution phase was later on in phase E. Phase A was markdown, where they were marking down price. Now, back then, these were the stockbrokers, the big money on Wall Street. But uh, the reason this is relevant is that a trader noticed back in 2021 that Bitcoin was following almost exactly a Wyckoff distribution pattern. And so that's why this is so interesting. If we overlay these, the schematic of the Wyckoff events and phases, it looked very similar to this weekly chart of Bitcoin. So we had marked down going, let's see, this would have been, yeah, coming out of 2022. We're seeing it all over again, you guys. Okay, so we want to pay attention. The markdown phase was the bear market came down here and they have these abbreviations that uh, we won't go into. But um, one of them that we I will show the market cycle high was something called the up thrust after distribution. So many people think, as I believe, the real high was in early, it was in November of 2021 when we spiked up to that 69K level and then we pulled back and we pushed higher the up thrust after distribution on the Wyckoff pattern uh, was that fake out where we, people were said, see, I knew it, we're going to 100,000, and then we didn't. Uh, but uh, here, history does repeat itself. And, and the reason for this is the big money players know that they can't just come in one day and buy a trillion dollars of Bitcoin. It would go straight up, and then they would have to sell it, and it would go straight down. Straight down. You can't make a market that way. So what happens in the Wyckoff patterns is they're accumulating down toward these lows, and this is down toward 16.5 between phase B and C, where they're accumulating, the accumulation phase, buy low, sell high. Well, the institutions, whales, big buyers, need time to accumulate over time and slowly so they don't spike up the price okay in conjunction with market makers and then during the markup phase which is this phase right here sort of the phase uh, c they start allowing prices to go higher also the selling pressure has largely gone away more buyers than sellers price go up the markup phase so prices go up and tend to get up around the high and you have these sos as signs of strength sometimes this is where the fake outs happen and uh, but then they're starting to distribute into the highs where retail traders this is why 
It's good to know this. Retail, you and me and most everybody else who are buying at the highs, that's because they uh, have been seeing this thing go higher and higher. Meanwhile, the big buyers are distributing or selling into that buying pressure. Okay, so that's uh, very interesting, this chart. I'm actually going to save a copy of this because I think that's uh, worth unpacking a little bit on uh, in the classes later this week. Very important. So once you understand that, then you know you have a better idea of when to be selling and when to be getting out. And uh, I'll share with you one of our other favorite indicators for when to sell uh, that you guys can. Uh, it's a, one of them is a free indicator you can modify a little bit. And then, of course, our Crypto Mastery indicators are excellent and showed us the exact top uh, to the week and uh, the exact bottoms to the month. So we'll show you that in a moment. Here we go. The uh, Wyckoff accumulation schematic phase E of the pattern indicates the asset is gearing up for the markup phase or a period of price rises, as I just said. Uh, let's see, I think it's a Bitcoin flashing bullish signal and pseudonymous analyst, Immortal. I don't know, these guys all want to hide behind these funny names. Uh, so on the other hand, this guy, Immortal, says does not share his optimism, at least in the short term. Uh, I believe that within the re realm of possibility, let me get my highlighter out here for you guys, uh, that uh, within the realm of possibility for Bitcoin to correct all the way down to 33K. Well, I've always... I'm already saying that. I think we need to pull back um, probably down to 32K. Maybe it's 33K. Uh, tomato, tomato. Either way, that would be good. I think that's the ideal place to be buying on this pullback and bounce, that buy zone, which we'll take a look at. Okay, how are we doing looking at time? We're about half an hour in. So let's get past the news and uh, get into some charts here. Let's just take a look here at uh, Crypto Panic, Good News Aggregator. I don't see anything else popping up. Uh, some non-news here. Charles Hoskinson, the founder of uh, fa Cardano, ADA, uh, draws some criticism from XRP Army over his statements. Uh, who, I don't know. Nobody really pays attention to Charles anymore. It's a slow-moving battleship. I don't mean to be hating on Cardano. It just uh, maybe in the long run, the tortoise beats the hare, but I uh, like to chase the hare, and I think uh, I'm not really going to dive into this. Uh, Charles is um, kind of a blowhard. You know, he pontificates a lot. Um, I, you know, they're doing a lot of potentially cool things. He sits here in his office somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, I don't know what they do all day, but they uh, usually are late on pushing new updates. And I think they're going to be late to the party, y'all. I don't know. That's that's my thoughts. We'll see what happens. I'm not a big fan of Cardano uh, for that reason. All right. Uh, lastly, Binance founder CZ leaves Binance.us board after regulatory statements. And, uh, you know, US Binance US already banned in for US users. So the other news was from Binance uh, proper. Uh, that uh, Binance.com is uh, is also under scrutiny. Binance US was launched for express purpose of serving US. Now, the reason for this is early on, Binance was um, giving the old one finger salute to the SEC, uh, not wanting to comply and saying essentially, come and get me, catch me if you can. Well, it looks like they did the long arm of the SEC. You don't want to upset, better to play along. And uh, that's really what Coinbase has been doing, even though they uh, haven't been given any clearer rules and faced some SEC scrutiny uh, last year over their yield lending product. Um, in, in the in the eyes of the SEC, they've tried the hardest. And, and I think the, the Coinbase uh, will be the last of the major exchange standing. So we are going to look at that chart here next because it's starting to look good. And I've been watching it the last few days. So for those reasons, I think... Um, you know, more money is going to flow in to Coinbase over the next few years. Uh, and uh, they have an excellent business model during bull markets. Now, I will point out, remember that Brian Anderson at one point last year in 2022 said, hey, you guys, um, look, if we go bankrupt, all your crypto is gone. Just so you know that. Uh, I don't think that was going to happen, but they had to, uh, for regulatory reasons and investor purposes, had to say, state that. Uh, but this is this whole dance here is ensuring that Coinbase does not fail. I think that's going to come out later. And BlackRock investing heavily in Coinbase, I believe. Um, let's see. Tron takes over Bitcoin's favorite network for listed activity. Yeah, Tron. I don't. Uh, I don't. We're not going to get into Tron. I think. Um, uh, yeah, that says it all. <clears throat> all right. Short squeeze alert for November. Two cryptocurrencies potential skyrocket. This I want to skyrocket. This I do want to look at. 
Uh, short squeezes can be fun if you're on the right side of it. Let's see uh, which ones. Uh, short squeezes can be great if you're long, terrible if uh, you're short. So Avalanche and Arbitrum showing relevant weight of opened shorts over the long positions in the derivatives market. Uh, that's tricky to bet on. That can be uh, long and short hedging. Could be uh, hedging against um, other, you know positions and derivatives. But let's just say open interest. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's take a look at AVAX and what was the other one? Arbitron. So we'll get to that. All right. Well, let's move on, you guys. So uh, I showed you that. Let's get into the charts. And um, by the way, if you like what you're watching here and you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe to this because we're going to be doing some more cool stuff as we go along. And uh, again, you can get this trade a success checklist we'll be working with here in a minute at our moonstream.io homepage. And uh, I'll be telling you a little bit about um, the uh, indicators that we use to tie these markets, which you can find at cryptomastery.org. But I can tell you how you get them free here in a little bit. Okay. Uh, these are the benchmark of what a lot of what we do here. So with that out of the way, <clears throat> let's take a look at uh, the top movers for today. We'll come back around on that. Skimming the list, I don't see anything that we are, are usually following. It looks rare on the list, so we'll dive into that in a bit. Uh, I want to look at, uh, just pull up a daily chart here and go over to Bitcoin. Bitcoin up 822, nice looking chart on the daily. Um, guys, that's a beautiful looking bounce. It's almost like we have a rocket forming. And those of you who know, who know, that's one of our favorite indicators. If we close... Toward the top of the day today, I'll be putting an alert out uh, for a rocket here. And it's breaking above. It's, it's testing that. We're just above 38K, you guys. Uh, this is looking pretty bullish here. The rocket indicator has a big real body with a tail down touching or below a major moving average or trend line support. So we discovered this uh, 2021. I discovered this as one well, a high probability bounce indicator um, based on moving averages. We've since expanded it to major support level. So look at that. We had a major resistance here at 37.3 and then broke above it, flipped as support, and it's held as support here for a number of days. So in that regard, we have a rocket forming and so at this point, we'll look at our other indicators. Now, our early reversal indicator showing bearish and a bit overbought here on the daily trend indicator, trend strength indicator. So at this point, I'll open it up to a weekly chart and see what we see there. And, uh, you know, we don't really have any other conclusive indicators. However, uh, this uh, rocket on the launch pad trumps all of the other indicators that we watch. So... What do I think? I think based on the Fibonacci projections, you know, we've been looking for a catalyst to get to that 43,000 level, which is right in here, the 2.618. This could be it. I think that's the next area of res resistance, right around 43K, 43.2 on our way again to that golden pocket around 50K. So we will look at that here in a bit. All right, very interesting. So uh, Bitcoin looking strong here today. Not sure why, but I do like when they ride along the 21-day exponential moving average. You know, we had this big push up here when our early reversal signal fired back on October 23rd. And we had a confirmation with our trend strength indicator going from red to green. This is a good place to dive into our trade success checklist because we had, this was an op opportune time to buy as we can see. Bitcoin from there, from our signals, all aligning right in this range. Let's just say in there, Bitcoin's up here now, 36, 37%. All right, so let's take a jump back over that. So for the trade success checklist, and I'm gonna have to re-download that again. So once you uh, download that, you just hit the download button. Okay, and so this is a way for you to gauge the, the success probabilities of the trades that you're in. And what we we have a new version coming out soon, by the way, with some new setups and some new screenshots, because I know this one's a little bit blurry. We, it's, uh, uh, we had to stretch it a bit to make it interactive. One of the cool things about the trade success checklist here is that it's an interactive PDF that you guys can use to, uh, let's see, do I have to do it here? Yeah, we have to download the PDF version of it. Okay, so we'll do that. And uh, so basically to evaluate a trade, 
uh, what happened there. We'll open this up a little bit, make it a little bigger so you can see that to evaluate a trade for you know probability of success. Let's say um, if the ERI is showing a green up arrow and for every one of these that you check, you get a score. So right here, you see it changed this to a one out of 19 score down below at the bottom. Can you guys see that right down here? So the more checks you add, the higher the score. Okay, so a three or four is an ideal entry. So let's take a look at this on this trade here that we were just looking at. So this is, of course, our early reversal indicator, this green arrow that has called every market bottom on a monthly time frame in the history of Bitcoin, only triggered four times. The last time was back in uh, January of 2023. So that called the time, the bottom to get in. And it's also excellent on this daily, weekly time frame, uh, calling these market tops and bottoms. So we had the ERI. So let's just go back here and uh, back in time and evaluate that trade. Now to show you how to use this indicator. And again, I'll show you how you can get it free here at the end of this video. So this green arrow is our early reversal indicator. It was an accidental discovery that has now become the backbone of getting into the markets when uh, we start to see alignment on some of these other things. The second indicator we look for alignment on is this one here called the trend strength indicator. What that looks like, uh, looks at is when we come down into this green zone and back above this line, this 20 line, and turns from red to green, then that is the confirming signal. So we have a TSI, we call that green, and above the 20 line gives us another check, right? So we now we have a two out of 19. The third is the has the signal line turned from red to green. So as a reminder, these indicators were created by one of our partners here who is a quant engineer, professional trader, and a mad scientist of sorts who sits around and creates trading indicators all the time and sophisticated auto trading futures uh, algos. So guys, this guy's a genius. And so this indicator, these are all based on different algos. So confluence is so important. When we start seeing these align, so back in here, again, the same time we saw our ERI TSI signal going green, we had the signal line. Now we're at three out of 19. And then the next one, which is part of our four kings, uh, when all four of these go, ERI TSI signal and bell, the bell here is a buy signal. The key says, hey, there's a new trend potentially forming. And the nuance on this is when this green line is at a 45 degree angle or higher, then this uh, bell signal is a buy and it signals a longer term follow through. So you can see it's an excellent indicator for catching new trends. And so the bell back here, October 17th, uh, along with the other ones. Now, these all confirm each other. So the ERI comes out first. You might ask, start adding to a position. The next day was the TSI. The next day was a signal and bell. You could have been adding to that position because this score is now a four out of 19 on that chart. And some of the other indicators that we can layer in on this, does the trend indicator have a green midline? Usually that's true with the trend and bell, but not always. So I always want to see a green midline down below as we saw it down here. So green, not red, but green adding to the score. Is there a bullish engulfing candle pattern? That's when we start looking at some of these other signals. No one here is candle body at support or EMA. Yes, it is right at support. So we can give that another check mark. So we can see our score is starting to go up higher now. Is it at the above the 21 and 50 exponential moving averages? We see that it was. So another check mark. So we can see that gave us an excellent trend score or trade score, seven out of 19. I would have been all in at four and five. Okay, is price above a rising support trend line? Well, uh, that uh, we did see. Okay, we could have said this was a rising, a higher low. Right, so let me open that up a bit. I'm not sure why it's not. Let me grab this trend line there and higher trend line support. So this, obviously, looking back, was a great trade. So as we check more of these off, is it breaking above trend line resistance? No, uh, not necessarily, although we did have some trend line resistance here. Come on now. Here we go there and breaking up above that. So yeah, I would say that was a one we could check trend line resistance breaking. So this was an excellent trade as we can see. And did that play out? Played out beautifully.
Okay, so our indicators caught that exact bottom down here. And uh, so really what I'm waiting for is another, I'd like to see another ERI on the bullish side. So, uh, but since we're in an uptrend, I think this trumps everything else. Guys, this is looking really good. Bitcoin's starting to rally. This is that rocket indicator. So we've built that into the trade success checklist also. Here, is there a rocket candle forming on uh, on a uh, support? So typically down here, this is a textbook rocket. The real body above 21 and 50 or trend line support with the candle down below. That's the fuse of the rocket. If you ever lit a bottle rocket when you were younger, you light the fuse it on the launch pad, shoots up in the sky, and then it falls back down to earth. And uh, these are high probability trade setups. Uh, Rocket is a green candle with real body resting at support and a price wick below that closes at or near the top of the day. So we want to see how Bitcoin closes today and see if we close near the top, because then I will go on record saying we go higher tomorrow and these markets will rally the rest of this week or at least for the next few days. This can be at a 21 or 50 period EMA, trend line support or other key level that has held price action. And we call that the rocket on the launch pad. The launch pad is equally as important as the shape of the candle, basically at support. Okay, this is that launch pad. You guys get that? So now we have a 10 out of 19 on a trade score back at those levels. And so um, that would have been an amazing trade. I know I'm mixing this a bit. The rocket is as of right now. Okay, so some of those were earlier down below. Well, great looking candle setup here. Let's look at the weekly on Bitcoin. Also looking great on the weekly, you guys. Uh, so, you know, I've been saying visually on the charts, I think we should pull back. But I have a sneaking feeling that since everyone expects that, we that we don't. I think we could rocket higher here and see a melt up scenario. I'd like to see a pullback here on these charts, but we, you know, we do need to see how the week closes because we've been up at this level before. We are at the top of a trend channel, so we don't know yet. I think the daily basis shows we are bullish for the next few days. We need to see how that weekly candle closes, and do we do we ride this all the way up? Here we can look at uh, a modified Bollinger Band. We've got upside potential on the Bollinger Band, and uh, and so we'll just have to see what happens. But uh, let's let's move on a little bit. Uh, let me just jump over to the chat too. I'm not sure where that chat window went. Um, okay, yeah, I don't see any chat. And um, by the way, again, if you uh, please do like this uh, and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow the audiences here, and uh, it helps the algorithm at YouTube to show it to more people. I do believe we have some of the best TA out there anywhere, and uh, I've got. Uh, you know, if you guys will like a bunch of these videos, I'll cover some un very unique uh, setup that uh, we discovered recently, not only where the bull market target is, I believe, but the next bear market target. And I'll show you why, if you guys wanna see that. If you wanna see that, uh, just give us a comment down below or in the chat. All right, so um, that, that's uh, this is Bitcoin here. Let's look at ETH a bit. We'll look at some of today's hot movers. ETH having trouble again, right about this 2200 level. You know, I have alert already set about 2225, 2250. But, uh, you know, we do need to see a break above this. Had the bullish ERI down here on the weekly time frame. And to confirm, again, ERI, TSI, Signal, and Bell. We had all four on the weekly time frame. Um, I will talk about that a little bit. The weekly signals are going to have more follow through, especially on this ERI and trend strength indicator going green. This shows more buying activity. And let me see, I've got another version of the ERI too that has money flow. This is in beta and is not available yet, but will be soon called the ERI Pro. So let me add that on there. And these uh, money flow boxes are great for uh, showing when money's coming into these markets here. So why isn't that showing up? It might still be loading. And, uh, oh, I, I'm sorry, I have to I have to drag it up onto the chart. Let me hide the standard ERI. I'm going to drag that up onto the chart as an overlay, merge all the scales into one on the right-hand side. Now we are good to go. So we saw, just to show you this, this is so cool, you guys, uh, the money, this shows money flow. So imagine back here, we had this money flow 
box trigger right when this is in August of 2020. Great signal for getting into ETH. Saw it happen again here, pushed all the way up to the market cycle high where we had a bearish ERI there and uh, in here as well on the monthly time frame. Okay, so we're not seeing that yet. Uh, so I'm a little bit surprised to see that article saying money flows going into ETH. Saw a bit of a push up here, but I would expect to see some profit taking. And, um, you know, uh, the, come on, give me this uh, trend line here. We were seeing higher lows, nice wedge pattern, but I would expect uh, Ethereum to come back down again, retest and then break through. Usually it's the third or fifth attempt. So once and twice, I would imagine and expect to see something more rely on the lines of a pullback, a break above, retest and then higher. Okay, so we'll see if that plays out. And um, but again, I'm waiting for my signals to fire. We've got uh, the ERI a bit overbought here on the trend strength indicator. So I'd like to see this cycle down a bit. Give us another opportunity to get back uh, into uh, ETH there. Uh, had a bit of that money flow box showing up right at the top, kind of going sideways. But I do think it's due for a pullback. I think the money is going to flow into Bitcoin and we see a pump here. That's what I'm seeing. All right, let's take a look at Solana here and basically on the uh, ERI on our indicators had a nice little signal down here confirmed with the TSI signal and the trend indicator showing up to zoom in a bit had a number of bells. The, the trend indicator we love because you almost expect Mario Brothers to come running in here, grabbing all the coins. We've gamified it a little bit. So again, that bell indicator, especially the first one, after the red line where there's no trend, this kicks off the usually multiple cycles of the trend indicator. And a way to read this is the key shows a new trend may be forming. The bell is a conf confirmation to buy, especially if you are waiting on the other indicators, ERI, TSI. And uh, the bag of money here is, is, is where you would take profits. And not all of it, but maybe 80% of the profits, the first dollar sign, maybe sell half of the position and wait for the next bell. And sure enough, we saw a, the price up higher, take profits. The key said, hey, we're going sideways. We saw a pullback. And then the next bull, uh, bell, bell, the next, uh, what is it called? Bell. Sorry, guys. Been a long week already. Uh, the next bell here showing time to buy again. Shot up in price. Take profits here. Went sideways, sideways. Another bell. Shot up in price here again with take profits signals at the tops. And now we are getting a new bell, but we've lost that trend indicator. So uh, Solana may be uh, ready for a rest. But look at this. You know, we, we nailed that with the ERI, the TSI signal and bell. Solana, since that point back in this range is up. 200%. So a little bit of a pullback, still up 168%, but we'll be watching that for the next uh, TSI and the next ERI. So um, we'll be watching that here. This is just a price pattern from a prior cycle. So we'll see if that does play out. I do think Solana goes considerably higher in this next bull run as high as 3000. I think Solana is definitely one, not financial advice, but it's definitely one I would think to have uh, in our bags. Uh, other people suggesting that $3,000 price point and um, potentially always being 20% of the value of ETH. So if you believe as I do, ETH could hit 15K in the next bull run, 20% of 15K puts Solana around 3,000. And uh, I have a chart for that that we cover in our M3 active trader class. Uh, so anyway, now is as good a time of any, by the way, to say, if you like the indicators and would like to get them free, uh, you can go over and find out more about our M3 active trader class, which meets on Wednesdays. It's a little longer class. We dive into macro charts, look at the total market cap. We look at the DXY. We look at uh, other movers and coin picks that have had an excellent uh, results here already this year. And um, as part of, if you go to moonstream.io slash M3 right there, or to our main website, there's a link down below. Weekly classes with me. You can chat with me 24 seven. I'm in there every day in a signal chat. You can ask questions and we have a members area with video training, the weekly class on Wednesdays. And as a bonus, you get a bunch of these uh, cheat sheets, high probability candlestick patterns, and a dollar cost average worksheet. A lot of my coaching students, we work on that together. How to build your ideal 
portfolio with a portfolio tracker. These are interactive Google Docs and a great way to really maximize the next bull market as well as these trading patterns, uh, cheat sheets. But also you get the crypto mastery indicators included with that. So go over to moonstream.io slash M3 for some more info on that and all of these bonuses. Uh, here's me at the Bitcoin conference in my M3 Active Trader hat. I've actually got one right here. Guys, we have 20 more of these on the way. Those of you in an Active Trader uh, love the hats. And um, if you'd like a free hat, you also get a hat with that. What more can you ask for? Growing a nice community here and some uh, reviews on the page you guys can read on your own time. So that's uh, moonstream.io slash M3 and everything that you get there. And uh, we do have a, a new monthly option to join for that, I believe, as this week only. I, I'm not sure. I'd have to, you'd have to click on the button. Okay. So uh, if you would just like the indicators, though, you can go to cryptomastery.org. There's a way to get a free month and just sign up there for six months. You get a month free, or you can pay 97 a month on the indicators. Okay. Uh, these have been our secret weapon. I can tell you that for sure. So, uh, and then um, just as an example, by the way, um, on the uh, monthly time frame for those of you that haven't already seen this, this is a chart we look at every week in the M3 Active Trader. Uh, this is showing my Fibonacci targets. Now, let me just tell you why. The last high, the, the market high from 2021 at 65,000, 69,000, was this Fibonacci from the 2018 high to the low, extended out, caught that uh, high, market high exactly, okay, the 3.618, okay, so wouldn't it make sense to also have it play out from the 2021 high to the 2023 low, a 3.618 extension, those of you familiar with Fibonacci's, the 1.618, 2.618, and 3.618 extensions are the most likely. So that's why I have this labeled. Very likely the next market cycle high, we break 100K. That's that 1.618. I think that's almost a given. The bull flag, or sorry, the uh, the uh, uh, golden pocket here from the high to low, right in this 48K to 50K range, that's the 618 to the 65. Very common to go and hit that, that um golden pocket region and then on the upside though the possible probable the 2.618 gives us 155 155k target i think that's certainly probable this bull cycle and even all the way up to 212,000 210,000 at the 3.618 isn't it interesting also there's confluence on this macro bull flag the flagpole down here, the flag in this downward channel, a break above. We are just breaking above the flag, guys. So we want to keep an eye on this on the monthly time frame because a flag break above here puts that measured move exactly to the 3.618, 210,000, call it 210, 212 range of where I think this thing could go. It's hard to get it on exact uh, on the, it's right in that range, 211,000. Okay, so almost exact right there. You see that, you guys? Is that exciting? How many of you would like to, uh, okay, see some comments? Yeah, how, how exciting is that? How would you, how many people would like to see 212,000 Bitcoin in the next bull cycle? Well, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, other tra other YouTubers and everything are usually late and, and follow along with my analysis later on. Um, yeah, you guys excited yeah. about that? So, uh, see, Ed says, would like to see estimate of the next bear market. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's awesome, Ed. Let's do that. Uh, I might have to pull up some other charts here, but since you said and asked nicely, uh, let's take a look. Um, right after I show you this, the early reversal indicator I told you has call is only triggered four times, you guys, in the history of Bitcoin. Back in 2012, near the bear market bottom, see this green arrow? Um, and by the way, I'll show you what this indicator really is. Sneak behind the curtain. Uh, you can see a little a, a sample arrow here and think this is a simple indicator. This is a number of indicators uh, made visually simple. The second time it fired was back in April here near this uh, market cycle low. As you can see, again, in uh, March of 19, just coming out of the market cycle bottom, 
later retested, but that was the bottom in 2019. And again, we saw it here the fourth time the monthly early reversal indicator showed here in January. Those of you who were in M3, remember we were saying this looks good. I think the bottom's in. It's time to go higher. Big bullish engulfing monthly candle and the early reversal candle there. So uh, were we happy that we were getting in there? Certainly we were. This went up 100% plus since that. So do these indicators work? They do, especially when they coincide with the trend strength indicators. So here, ERI TSI, ERI TSI going green, ERI TSI confirmed in March. It went green here, January, February, March. So we were saying, get in these markets, guys, back earlier this year. Everyone else was still thinking we were going to go lower. We could tell that we weren't going lower. So anyway, that's why uh, we love these uh, indicators here. And um, without further delay, how are we doing on time here? We're going just at the hour. So perfect time to come back in. Um, you know, I was going to look at some top movers here, which we normally do. I'll skim these for anything that might look good. Circulating supply, uh, I like to see at least around 30 million. We could uh, look at, uh, well, Syscoin's back in the running. I do like Syscoin as a project. Former Moonstream pick. Uh, we do follow that in M3 Active Trader. Uh, Syscoin was great. Okay, so this is something we want to pay attention to. Uh, okay, and there we've got a buy block on Syscoin. So Syscoin was an excellent coin. If I go to a weekly back uh, in the, let me turn off some of this noise here. Uh, even uh, in the bull market here. So Syscoin is a really interesting project here. From the, the bottom of 2020 at a 67X, uh, we were recommending it, I believe, here early on uh, in 2020. But uh, this had this great run even after the rest of the market was turning. Sys was still going higher here. So about 110X from this little dip. So it, it's this great coin that once we identify a trading channel on this, which is something new we're really looking for in this bull market, when can we identify a new trending trending uh, trade channel? God, we're back on uh, alliteration here. Lots of T's now. So we had a downward trending channel here. What's exciting about this is we're starting to turn and Syscoin is one to watch when we confirm it's into a new upward trending channel. Now, this is a weekly chart. This could still reverse and be a fake out. So, you know, whether this was the trend channel and we had an earlier breakout, it's hard to say. We want to keep an eye on this. But uh, we're starting to see sort of higher lows on this. I like Syscoin a lot, and it's one to watch. So as far as our early uh, reversal indicator, we had a double ERI here. I have a bearish year right here. So it's probably, I'd like, I'd rather buy into strength on a, the next cycle down. So I'd watch, I'd watch this coin, put it on the radar. Um, right now, I do think it has more upside here because of this buy block and it's breaking into a new territory. Now it's kind of hard to find a uh, Syscoin. Where is it available? Uh, it's on Bittrex, which we can no longer use. That's where I was trading it. And BitGet, uh, Bittrex, as I mentioned, KuCoin, if you're outside the U.S., keep an eye on Syscoin. It's a little bit hard to buy. Uh, we can no longer use Binance U.S. So for us in the U.S., uh, let's see, it is on MEXC, still doesn't have KYC, so there's an opportunity there. And I'm searching to see. It's on Kraken, though. Uh, the futures are on Kraken. Do we have the underlying... <clears throat> not sure if we do. And is it on Uniswap or any of these uh, DEXs? I don't see that, but it might be on Uniswap. So here we go. We've got Uniswap versus ETH there. Uh, but that's something different. That's SUS. Okay, so be very careful with these. So unfortunately, it's not easy to buy. I might be able to find it on Changely or one of these other conversion uh, DEXs that, um, you know, I think we're going to see a big influx in new DEXs this year. Uh, DYDX is one to keep an eye on, certainly. So uh, Syscoin, what I'll do here is I'm going to set an alert to see if we start breaking above this 0.18 level. Uh, I, uh, I do think this has potential here. We have saw 70x potential in the next bull run, the last bull run rather. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, unpack that. So I'll save that. I'll close that. And let's see. I think there was one more we wanted to look at here on the fast movers. 
Uh, and let's see, I do want to see a, like at least a minimum, you know, 112 million in volume on Syscoin. That's respectable. When they when they're this small in the 100k, uh, those are two subject to pump and dumps. Uh, we have SEI. I'm not familiar with SEI. We can take a quick look at this. And uh, Ed, we will get to that estimate of the next bear market. Uh, this thing here is somewhat interesting in, as it's into price discovery mode when it hits up into new highs. But uh, And that certainly can take off. What do they do? I don't know. We'll leave that on here. Maybe add it to our watch list to uh, for next week on Crypto Mastery just to see if that's gone any higher. And I'll set an alert just above this level. These things, uh, again, when they get into price discovery zone, they can really take off. All right, and the best way to find them early is on this fast movers on uh, trading view. Let's see, skimming down through here, we have SCI we looked at. This isn't big enough. Atlas, pretty small. It's gaming though, so the categories are worth watching. I don't know. Let's take a look at Atlas. Gaming is a hot market, and these things are poised to really run higher. Looking at it on this chart here on the daily, you know, it's already had a bit of a move. Let's jump over to the weekly, see what we see. It's overbought here on the TSI. I would wait for that to come back down to earth. And uh, of course, uh, one thing I didn't promise that I promised you we'd look at for a sell signal that you guys can use. Many of you in our M3 group already know this, but if you, um, uh, my key sell signal is a Bollinger Band, modified Bollinger Band. Bollinger Bands work okay in stocks. Uh, Crypto is too volatile. So what you want to do with a Bollinger Band here, and this is one of our best secrets, is go in and change the settings to from the default standard deviation of two to three. Can you guys see that right in here? Just change that to a third standard deviation, and then it widens it so that that becomes a very good area to take profits because invariably when they get above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, they pull back. So I would be selling this Atlas, this is going to pull back, probably go sideways. Maybe pump a little more tomorrow if it's getting uh, margin pumped. But uh, we'll leave that Bollinger Band on as we go through some of these. I'm not going to keep this chart up, and uh, but I set an alert in case it continues, it'll land on there again. So one more, you guys. I want to skim down here. I did see one more that we like. Uh, Looks Rare is on this, which we have been watching. It's a Moonstream pick in our newsletter, and it's up considerably. Uh, it's got 11 million volume. A couple of these other ones, let's see, Skimming Chrome, we've got Superverse, Chain GPT, Smart Contracts. I don't know, there may be some interesting ones here we want to unpack here. Uh, let me get to Looks Rare next. And that's not, I'm not interested in this at this point. It's uh, It's coming up to resistance. Okay, so not so much on that one. And coming down, let's see what is prop chain real estate. Not really exciting. I'm looking for hot sectors. We've got lending, not really exciting. Yeah, so NFTs and also what uh, what does this say here? It's hard to see. It's NFTs, collectibles, marketplace. Looks rare, if you're not familiar, is the new F NFT marketplace. And it's one to keep an eye on. I believe it's up a couple hundred percent since we recommended it in our newsletter in October. Um, or actually, I think it was our November pick. So this is looks rare. And since the beginning of November from our newsletter, I can confirm that with you guys. It's up here almost 100%. If we add in the indicator stack that we are using here, I'll use this one. Uh, there's my template. So what do we see? A bit bearish, a bit overbought on the daily. But I think because it's breaking into new highs, I'm going to look at the weekly. So I know there's a lot on here. As you can see, we've been watching Looks Rare. And this is our old friend Wayne Gretzky. What does Wayne Gretzky do? He skates to where the puck is going to be. And that's what our indicators allow you to do. Where is the puck going to be? Well, what I also see here, we're in a nice uptrending channel. So we want to make sure we're watching that. And so where are we likely to go? We're likely to go higher now that we're above this resistance zone. Our ERI called it perfectly right back here in September, followed by the uh, TSI a little bit later. TSI went green here. And that would have been an ideal time to buy. And we're pushing up. This can stay overbought for a while. So we want to keep an eye on that. And we have another, a few more numbers in our trend sequence. We have the five and the six and the seven. The seven is the sell signal. I think we have a couple more weeks potentially on looks rare. 
to go higher now that we're finding support in this area. So Wayne Gretzky is skating up in this higher area. He thinks it's going to go higher. You guys, what do you think? All right. So there's looks where uh, we're seeing some nice buy pressure, as we saw on the trading view. And it's a very cool project. So I uh, I do like this. If you guys would like me to confirm, I guess I should probably do that. And uh, I'll check the comments here, but I want to just double check here. This was our pick in our Moonstream newsletter. That's our monthly newsletter, you guys, if you would like monthly picks with a uh, one pick we do every month in a market analysis. You can sign up for a Moonstream, which we just actually closed out. Uh, but I think there's probably a way to sneak in one or two more of you if you're here today. And so what I'm doing here on the back end is logging in to show you the newsletter that we just released in November. Also, we're also got some great uh, prospects for the December newsletter, which is due out soon. Okay, so bear with me here. And then we will get to that future bear market targets. I promise we'll do that next. Okay, so here is the uh, newsletter in the back office for a new uh, news. Uh, Moonstream, sorry guys, too much coffee maybe. The November newsletter, here we do a market overview. We talk, uh, Mike, my business partner, one of the smartest in crypto, hands down. Uh, macro analysis, uh, we talk about what we think is going to happen. And then our pick for the month was, drum roll please, uh, I was right, looks rare. So on November 1st, this was our Moonstream pick. So I'm happy to see that uh, in the news. We give targets, price targets, and uh, also covered it on our monthly uh, Zoom that we do. If you would like more information about that, just go to moonstream.io. Having trouble typing here too. Okay, moonstream.io. And right here, it's called the Moonstream Method. We were kind of playing around with that name. It's really a newsletter. And I don't know, this page may have expired though. Uh, yeah, it's going to redirect. If you want to get on the wait list, we just promoted this. It's currently sold out, but uh, you can message us, email us, and uh, we can, if you'd like to get in or more information about that, or put that in the chat and uh, one of our team members, because you can't go to the, you can't get it right now. We just closed that down with a great Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. All right, you guys, with all that out of the way, um, you're going to love this. So let me, I'm going to close a few things because I've got to open up a whole bunch of charts here, one in particular. So I'll do this off screen and I'm going to pull up that future bear, bull and bear market potentials. And I'll tell you where you can go look at it, by the way, because I just did a video on this last night. You can go over to our, we do, I do a bi-weekly analysis on YouTube. So there's a little deeper dive on this, if you go over to uh, this YouTube channel, I'm gonna show it to you right now also, but uh, this is our good friend. Some of you know me from there, Contrarian Dude. Uh, this is Max Wright, good friend there. And you can see that uh, I do um, periodic updates here. So this is the one we just posted this morning, future Bitcoin bull and bear targets. Okay, so uh, that's what we're talking about. You can go check that out. And uh, like and subscribe there as well. But um, for now, while I'm worrying about that or pulling up these other charts, I've got these saved in another area. So I've got to display my one tab here and pull up those charts. Uh, I can recreate it, but it's going to look so much better if we do it this way. All right. So the is this the one? Um, my mastery 10 tabs. I've, I've got a ton of charts here, you guys. I believe it's this one. Let's see. Where did that go? Ah, here we go. Yep, there we go. So uh, there it is. Let me explain this to you guys. I'll do it quickly. I know you're busy and want to get back to the markets. So a couple things here. This is the uh, TLDR. Um, that's um, I'm kind of giving it away. Let me back this up a bit so that uh, we can take it one step at a time because how we arrived at this was important. I had a coaching student say last week, say, and, and David, you might be here, say, I have a question. When, where would the, are, is the next market bottom likely to be? So you guys saw me talk about uh, the next market cycle high could potentially be up in this. What uh, what is this? This this is a shorter term. Ignore that. We looked at here. 
forgive me. Let's rebuild this. So on the fib retracements, okay, um, from the last 2017 to the bottom, the projection put us the 3.618 went right to the top of where the markets topped out. Can you guys see that? I don't know why it's doing this. Uh, it's always when I'm doing something live here. Okay, uh, it's it's giving me a little bit of trouble to read. Okay, it came right up to 3.618. Uh, it's a little bit off, but on the other charts, I showed how that was exact around 67K. So we drew from the last high to the low, gives us the target of around 212K. Remember that? All right, let me put on price labels and hide the fib retracements. So over the last cycles here, and we looked at these here a bit, these high, low, high, low. So the if we go from the 68K roughly to the low of 15K and we project up to the 3.618, remember that put us out here at 212, give or take. All right, this will all make sense in a moment, I promise you. So this should be out a little bit here. All right, so then because of this, if I use a FIB extension, we need three data points, okay? So uh, for now, let me do this here. Let me not get ahead of myself. On the FIB extensions, the way we arrived at this is say we said, okay, well, let's find out how the last bottom came to be. So basically, we took the three data points that we knew, the high in 2017 around 20,000 to the low around 3,000 to the high around 68,000, right? The pullback on that with the FIB extension came down and it didn't have any FIB numbers that corresponded to that. So we started playing around with other numbers. You know, we these other ones didn't really apply. Uh, the 2.72, the 2.14 that were FIB numbers, and then even past that, the 3.2, none of these really fit, right? You see that? So we turned those off and we said, well, where did it stop? And on a whim, we pulled up 3.14, which is pi. You might be familiar with the pi cycle top, the pi cycle bottom indicators. Those are very accurate for choosing the tops and bottoms. So pi has some relevance in these markets. And so since this was that pullback, the market cycle low right at 3.14, we decided let's see if we can recreate that on the next market cycle high. Cycle high. Now, since we don't know the next market cycle high, we have to guess. But based on that FIB projection of 212, it comes right in here. We can approximate that by opening this up with the extension this way. Okay, so last high around 70K to the low around 15.6. Okay, again, we know those data points. We're not sure of the high, but we're approximating it up here around 212,000 you know, give or take, I'll lower it down a bit. But isn't it interesting that the pi 3.14 on that, all coming together now, can, comes right down to this 45,000 level area, give or take. Now, it's also possible that this, you know, we we I think we probably come back and retest 70K, 68K. That would be the 2.618 retracement. This is all based on if we go to 212. We don't know that yet, but it seems more likely because, bear with me here, I'm going to put one more thing on here that will blow your mind, uh, because the retrace ranges on this, all right, this is what we saw at the beginning. What's very interesting about this is in prior cycles, we pulled back. Bitcoin has in the past gone down about 85%, but the most recent pullback from the market cycle high to the market cycle low, 77.64%, 78% pullback from the highs, the market highs. Well, if we go up to that 20, 212,000 and we do a 78% pullback, where does that put us? It puts us exactly at this level that we're looking at, the 3.14 pullback, which is pi. Isn't that interesting? So we're going to leave that on here. Uh, and we have two possibilities for a market bottom, though. We could come back and bounce at that 2.618. If we can't hold there, however, I think we go back. I think we come down to 45K. So if you like that, be sure and hit like down below. I'd like to get the messaging out to more people, you guys. And um, hopefully uh, you like that. So 
there you go. If you'd like to see, I'll probably do a trading view video on that. If you'd like to watch it again, you can watch it here on our Crypto Mastery channel. Now, if you're watching that here, if you are here live and you're part of our Moonstream community, please do go over to our own uh, YouTube community where you can watch this a little bit later. And we uh, will probably get an email out to our email list where to find us on YouTube. That would probably be a good idea. We've been doing this for a year uh, and it looks just like this. So, uh, and you go over under videos and uh, you can see we've been doing this for a while here and uh, lots of good stuff. So please do uh, like and subscribe. Uh, we've got 118 subscribers, everybody. It's ticking up, <laughs> blazingly slow. But uh, so we'd love to have more of you here uh, in this uh, in this uh, area. Let's see. Uh, Myrene, is this one of ours? I guess so. Yeah, it doesn't have our normal thumbnail with my photo on it. But uh, anyway, um, that's what we have for you guys. Hopefully you liked the uh, the presentation. Alex says, this is why I love crypto. The numbers don't lie. Exactly. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. And if you're new here, uh, welcome to go over to moonstream.io to find out more about our other services. If you're a beginner, the blockchain bottom line is a great course to get up to speed ahead of this next bull run. This is our newsletter, which again is technically sold out. So you'd have to uh, reach out to us for that or just get on our email list. Uh, you can do that down below on any of these free services. If nothing else, sign up for the free weekly newsletter that we put out. You can also sign up for our weekly trainings on Tuesdays, which is why you're here today. And uh, the Trader Success Checklist. So those are three things you can get as well as a couple other things. The five biggest mistakes crypto investors make. You just click on any one of these images and you can get access to these uh, reports that we've made free for you guys. OK, so and uh, then, of course, uh, other free reports and other things that we do here at Moonstream Crypto. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation and you like the new format here. Uh, again, if you want to get a free cool looking hat, you can do that. Go down here to Moonstream M3 Active Trader and uh, sign up because you get those indicators. Uh, promise you these are the best indicators you'll ever use. So Phil says uh, great stuff. Thank you. Um, thank you, Phil. Thanks, Leslie. Nice to see you guys. And Amir, thank you. Like the format. Great. Uh, join us every Tuesday. You know, uh, we do this and do a little bit more in-depth training on the Wednesday classes. So you're welcome to join us there. Uh, hey, Rick, how's it going? All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Take care.